Hello, this is a preview in pediatric hematology. This is a four-year-old boy visits your clinic with a pallor. He drinks 32 to 40 ounces of cow's milk every day. He has been pale over the last several days. Vital signs are normal. On physical examination, he doesn't have jaundice, no hepatitis polynomegaly or lymphadenopathy. The remainder of the physical examination is unremarkable. White count is 7.5 and the red blood cell count is 4 million. Hemoglobin level is low was 6 and the main corpuscular volume is low was 59. The platelet count is slightly elevated, is 495, and the reticulocyte count is low, is 0.5%. What is the most likely diagnosis? Iron deficiency anemia, beta thalassemia, alpha thalassemia, sideroblastic anemia. The correct answer is iron deficiency anemia. The key point in this case, uh, this is a four years old boy who, uh, who is pale, drinking large amount of milk, of cow's milk. Cow's milk can cause direct injury to the intestinal mucosa with uh, continuous uh, uh, micro blood loss in stool and over time this can cause anemia. Uh, physical examination there is no jaundice uh, to suggest hemolytic uh, anemia as a cause. Uh, also the rest of the exam is normal. The CBC white count is normal, hemoglobin is low, MCV is uh, less than 74. If we use the formula we used before, 70 plus 4, 74, so it is microcytic anemia. Platelet count is a slightly elevated, retic count is low for this low level of hemoglobin. So this is a classic presentation of iron deficiency anemia. So the diagnosis from the history and CBC is sufficient. No need for uh, further lab work to confirm the diagnosis. So you can go ahead and treat directly uh, uh, from the history and uh, by looking at the CBC. So and the, retest the patient in one month. So if the hemoglobin normalized, this is diagnostic and therapeutic. Causes of iron deficiency anemia nutritional exclusive breastfeeding without iron supplementation, especially after four months of age, lack of iron rich foods, consumption of large amount of cow's milk every day, more than 24 ounces of whole milk per day. This will cause direct injury to the intestine, micro bleeding and blood loss. Impaired absorption, for example, malabsorption syndrome, uh, the iron usually absorbed from the duodenum, like cases of celiac disease commonly associated with iron deficiency anemia. Important cause of iron deficiency anemia is blood loss. For example, GI or blood loss from the GI, for example, cow's milk allergy, uh, exceditive enteropathy like in Crohn's disease, Meckel's diverticulum, uh, vascular malformation, uh, parasites, for example, hookworms, uh, genitourinary like excessive uh, menstrual, uh, menstrual uh, bleeding like in cases of uh, Van Villebrandi disease or hemoglobinuria like in cases of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Pulmonary good pasture syndrome, uh, pulmonary hemosiderosis should be suspected in a child with a chronic cough and uh, uh, iron deficiency anemia. Clinical presentation of iron deficiency anemia pallor so the child will look pale Keolonychia, which is spooning of the nails, the pica is very important, which is desire to eat unusual substance like ice, dirt, etc. A headache, a, a irritability, anorexia, a tachycardia, and a systolic murmur. Laboratory is very important to be able to identify from the lab the iron deficiency anemia, low uh, mean corpuscular volume, so the MCV will be uh, microcytic, but remember that in the beginning of the iron deficiency anemia, MCV can be normal, so normal MCV do not roll out uh, iron deficiency anemia. Uh, low mean uh, corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, so the MCHC will be low. Uh, elevated platelet count can be elevated, but in the beginning can be normal. It will be more than 450, like in the previous case. Normal or elevated white uh, cell count. Uh, red blood cells uh, can become uh, microcytic as the disease progress and hypochromic and increase in different sizes. And when this happens, also this will increase the RDW, which is uh, the uh, red cell width distribution. Target cells are usually absent. If you see target cells, this is a classic for thalassemia. You, you need to know that iron deficiency anemia can be normocytic in the beginning. This is very important to keep in mind. Classic laboratory finding in cases of iron deficiency anemia, of course, low serum iron. This is iron deficiency anemia and low ferritin level. This is the best study. This is the best test and most reliable test. When the ferritin is low, this is diagnostic for iron deficiency 
anemia. But when the ferritin is normal or high, this is, uh, is not a reliable test for iron deficiency anemia anymore because this can be elevated with coexisting condition like in case of hepatitis or anemia of chronic disease. Uh, elevated TIBC. What is TIBC? Is transferrin. So transferrin is the carrier of iron. Whenever the ferritin is low, the, the TIBC will be elevated and just signaling the liver to produce more transferrin to looking for any iron in the circulation to carry it. So normally when the ferritin is low or the iron storage in the bone marrow will be low, will send the signal to the liver to produce more transferrin. So the transferrin will be elevated, which is the TIBC. Uh, the retake count will be low because there is no iron to make red blood cells. The Menzer index is suggestive, is not diagnostic, but is suggestive of iron deficiency anemia if it's more than 13. How to calculate? MCV divided by red blood cells in million. For example, MCV in this example equals 64, so it is microcytic, and the red blood cells is uh, count is 5.3, so it's, it's slightly on the higher side. So the, if you divide the 64 by the 5.3 equal 12, this is le less than 13, and this is thalassemia. So there is no problem with the making red blood cells. So the, in cases of thalassemia, red cell count is usually is normal or elevated. Uh, but in cases of iron deficiency anemia, the, the body is not making enough red blood cells, so the red blood cell will be low, so it's expected for the Menzer index to be uh, elevated. So MCV here is 72, uh, divided uh, by uh, 4.8, so 72 divided by 4.8 equal 15, which is more than 13. So if it's less than 13, suggestive of thalassemia, if it's more than 13, is uh, suggestive of iron deficiency anemia. This is a peripheral smear of a child with a hypochromic microcytic anemia, so the size of the red cell is smaller than normal and with exaggerated central halo uh, or central pallor. And also there is a variability in the size between the cells and this is consistent with hypochromic microcytic anemia and can be seen or commonly seen in iron deficiency anemia. What are the best initial studies in cases of suspected iron deficiency anemia, CBC, reticulocyte count? Reticulocyte count is expected to be low when you have iron deficiency anemia. Soluble transferrin receptor level. This should be high in cases of iron deficiency anemia. So soluble transferrin receptor level is high in cases of iron deficiency anemia. And it's very helpful to differentiate iron deficiency anemia from uh, cases associated with inflammation or anemia of chronic disease. Because serum ferritin is the best for iron storage, but can be elevated in cases of inflammation or also elevated in cases of uh, anemia of chronic diseases. From the history and physical examination and the CBC, if you diagnose iron deficiency anemia, it is uh, important to start the oral therapy as soon as possible of uh, ferrous salts or uh, ferrous sulfate or gluconate. The dose of iron therapy, of oral iron therapy, is 3 to 6 milligram per kilogram of elemental iron per day. We need to remember this by heart. 3 to 6 milligram per kilo of elemental iron per day. This is the dose of the uh, oral iron. And it's better to advise the patient to take it in empty stomach if it's possible and to take with acidic uh, juice, like for example, orange juice or lemonade. This will enhance the absorption of the iron. Uh, the iron is better to be absorbed in uh, acidic media. Uh, a common problem with iron is the taste and the GI irritability and constipation. Uh, advise the patient to take more water and uh, increase the fiber in the diet. Uh, this will uh, help with this problem. A response to iron therapy, you know, is diagnostic and therapeutic. It is very important to repeat a CBC in two to four weeks after starting the oral iron. The first thing we'll correct is the hemoglobin and the hematocrit. The, if the hemoglobin increased by one gram per deciliter or more in 14 days, this is a, an excellent predictor of successful uh, therapy and it is diagnostic and therapeutic of iron deficiency anemia. Uh, the next thing we'll correct in the CBC is microcytosis. This will be followed by the correction of serum ferritin. Iron therapy should be continued for at least two months after the hemoglobin normalized to replenish the iron stores. Uh, discontinue the CBC is normal and repeat the test in six months. Blood transfusion, very important, and this is always distractor in the exam. Blood transfusion reserved only for severe symptomatic anemia. Means unstable, means tachycardia, lethargy, respiratory compromise. 
This is very important to keep in mind. Prevention of iron deficiency anemia is critical. Uh, for exclusive breastfeeding infants, they should be supplemented with oral iron. For preterm infants, 2 mg per kilo per day of oral iron by one month of age should be supplemented. Full term infant, the dose is lower, is 1 mg per kilo per day of oral iron uh, from 4 months until the uh, iron rich food will be supplied. Uh, formula fed infants, if the formula rich in iron or with adequate amount of iron, there is no need to give uh, or supplement oral iron for full term infants. Uh, whole milk should not be used in the first uh, 12 months of life. There, uh, before 12 months, you should not use or supplement uh, or give whole milk because this uh, uh, will cause iron deficiency anemia. Uh, limit cow's milk uh, to less than 500 cc per day in uh, children older than one year. Uh, iron supplementation for vegetarian, they are largely uh, depending on vegetarian diet. Also, a, a screening for iron deficiency anemia uh, in the well visit at one year and two years for iron lead is very important. A two-year-old infant with a hemoglobin 4 grams per deciliter, normal MCV, low reticulocyte count, normal ADA, which is adenosine deaminase activity, negative direct Combs test, and no signs of hemolysis. What is the most likely diagnosis? Folic acid deficiency, Fanconi anemia, transient erythroblastopenia of a childhood diamond black fan anemia. The correct answer, transient erythroblastopenia of a childhood. The key words or the key points here, severe anemia, the anemia is normocytic, low reticulocyte count and normal ADA. The first disease we'll discuss in normocytic anemia is transient erythroblastopenia of a childhood. Uh, this is the most common acquired red cell ablesia in a childhood, uh, more common than diamond black fan anemia, which is congenital hypoplastic anemia. But remember, this is macrocytic uh, for a transient erythroblastopenia of a childhood is normocytic. The etiology uh, is a transient suppression of red blood cell production, uh, often noted after viral infection and with no evidence of parvovirus B19. Common age of presentation between uh, 3 months and 3 years of age, most commonly more than 12 months of age. More common in males, the most common presentation is asymptomatic, no symptoms despite the severity of anemia and a very low level of hemoglobin. The patient may present with gradual increase in pallor. Uncommon presentation is increased fatigue or decreased energy breath holding spills. Laboratory finding in cases of erythroblastopenia of a childhood, normocytic anemia, MECV will be normal, hemoglobin can be very low down to 2, uh, and the reticulocyte count will be decreased, the bone marrow uh, biopsy rarely needed, but if it's done, you, it will show erythroid suppression. Normal adenosine uh, deaminase level in cases of diamond black fan anemia, the MECV will be elevated macrocytic anemia, also the EDA will be high, also diamond black fan anemia will be associated with congenital abnormalities, for example, short stitcher, abnormal facial features, and abnormal thumb. The treatment here from the name transient, so is reassurance despite the very low level of hemoglobin reassurance and re usually the patients will recover within two to three months occasionally and rarely transfusion is necessary diagnosis initially absent megakaryocyte then pancytopenia if beyond neonatal period bone marrow aspirate and biopsy will confirm the diagnosis thrombocytopenia absent radius syndrome or tars syndrome uh, this is a very rare autosomal recessive disease, but very common to see it in the pediatric board examination. Clinical presentation thrombocytopenia absent radius. This is, this is the key word for this disease. Low platelet and absent radius. Congenital heart disease can be seen with this disease. Tetralogy follow uh, ASD uh, or VSD. Other uh, abnormalities, eosinophilia, milk uh, protein allergy, leukomoid reaction or transient elevation of white count intellectual disability the outcome of this disease very important to know that thrombocytopenia improve with time especially in the first year and the transfusion support for bleeding or for surgery other causes of thrombocytopenia because of platelet destruction this can be immune or non-immune 
Uh, immune means uh, destroyed by antibodies, uh, like in cases of idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura or medications. Non-immune, like in case of thrombo, uh, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, hemolytic uremic syndrome, DIC infection, cardiac, like for example, artificial valve. Idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. Uh, the etiology is antiplatelet antibodies, autoimmune, idiopathic means nobody knows why. Uh, often a few weeks after infection, like uh, upper respiratory tract infection. Clinical presentation, you have to know that this is presents in very healthy appearing children. There is, they don't have any problem, but suddenly they will start to ha show uh, some PTKI. And when you do CBC, you will see the platelet count is very low. Echemosis and the epistaxis, they may present with nosebleed. The major risk here is very important, intracranial hemorrhage. Diagnosis of ITP is from the history. Typically, a healthy child presents with PTKI or nosebleed. Uh, and if you do the CBC, you will see the platelet count is low, thrombocytopenia with normal red blood cells and white blood cells. So only one cell line is affected, the platelet, but the red blood cells and white blood cells are normal. And if you look at the peripheral smear, you will see between normal size and increased size of the platelets. Uh, no excess of red cell fragments, no abnormal red blood cells, and no schistocyte. So this is a typical in cases of ITP. This is a four-year-old boy presents with recurrent nose bleeding. He has bruises on the legs, trunk, and arms. He also has a few BTKI on the tongue and a hard palate. No hepatosplenomegaly, no lymphadenopathy. His CBC is normal except the platelet count is 2,900. He has no headaches and no other symptoms. What is the best next step? Corticosteroids, IVIG, close observation, aspirin, or plasmapheresis. The correct answer here is close observation. This is a classic case of immune thrombocytopenia and the treatment is close observation regardless the platelet level. Immune thrombocytopenia or ITP. Etiology antiplatelet antibody. Often a few weeks after infection or upper respiratory tract infection. Clinical presentation usually the child looks healthy, healthy appearing child, not ill like cases of leukemia. Presenting with PTKI, ecchymosis as you see here, and nosebleed or epistaxis. The major risk of this disease is intracranial hemorrhage. Peripheral smear in cases of ITP, thrombocytopenia, very low platelets. Normal red blood cells and normal white blood cell count. Unlike cases of leukemia, you will find the patient is having anemia and neutropenia in most cases. Normal to increase the size of platelets no excess red cell fragments treatment of itp is close observation regardless the number of platelets observation close observation no contact is supposed to prevent uh, intracranial hemorrhage no non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or any drug will affect the platelet activity 85 percent resolve in six months treatment only for symptomatic patients with uh, bleeding for example, intracranial bleeding, and typically or classically, this will occur if the uh, or might happen if the level is very low, less than 10,000. For example, by giving IVIG, steroids, splenectomy if the patient is more than four years of age with severe ITP longer than one year. Having trouble or trying to pass the pediatric board exam? We have the definitive solution for you. Presenting the Last Minute Review Series, a powerful tool for achieving success in pediatric board exams, crafted by Dr. Osama Naga, a board-certified pediatrician by American Board of Pediatrics and the editor of the Pediatric Board Study Guide, a Last Minute Review. Dr. Naga breaks down the most critical subjects in this series. The Pediatric Last Minute Review webpage offers a thorough and rigorous set of pediatric board review sessions that are in line with the study guide. The lectures will cover the most important topics for each condition that a pediatrician must know for pediatric board exams, as well as real-life clinical encounters. The inclusion of a clinical case scenario, accompanied by multiple-choice questions, followed by the most probable answer and a comprehensive description of the issue, will ensure test readiness for each student. You will be able to download the lecture's PDF files to make your studies easier, to take notes and be accessible on the go and offline. Based on the membership plan you choose, you will have unlimited access to the lectures for either one month, three months, six months, or one year.
By viewing these videos, you will increase your chances of passing the board exam and gain substantial advantages from the acquired knowledge. Additionally, by studying the material and completing the AAP prep questions from the previous three years, you will greatly increase your likelihood of passing the board and will acquire a wealth of knowledge. Click on the link provided below to visit lastminutepediatric.com and subscribe immediately. Be sure to take advantage of our free video samples on our YouTube channel, Pediatric Board Last Minute Review. Good luck with your exams!